Hello friends, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Thanks for tuning in. As you read by the title of this video today, I am sharing my favorite resources for teaching and learning math without curriculum. I was inspired by Jessica at the Waldock Way. She recently put out a video where she shares resources in several subject categories. I will link her video down below. Please go watch it. She always has so many good recommendations for game schooling. The beauty of homeschooling is that there is no one way and every family does things differently and I love shedding light on that message. So I thought that it was about time that I compile our favorite math resources in a video to go with our own method and styles of approaching mathematics. Nature. Math is a fundamental part of nature. Step outside with your children and you'll find endless opportunities for practicing math. Some of my favorite resources for math outdoors is a year of forest school. So basically seasonal ideas for activities, games, and crafts. And although this resource is not math specific, there are many activities that put math fundamentals and concepts to practice like fort building, making knots for shelters and dens, uh, which is STEM. There are simple woodworking uh, and that's measurement, graphing patterns and symmetry in nature mandalas and recipes. Swirl by swirl spirals in nature. I have mentioned this title a lot recently, so I won't go in depth, but we've enjoyed this title so much recently and it's inspired us to look out for patterns, symmetry, and shapes in nature. Scavenger hunts are a fun and effective activity for practicing math outdoors. You can find so many printables online or you can make your own. For example, here's a printable for a backyard measurement scavenger hunt. So finding something smaller than six inches or measure the length and width of a leaf. Or a simpler idea like finding a certain amount of things in nature. These printables are not created by me, but I'll link both blogs in the description box. Montessori math beads. This material visually represents the quantity of numbers and how those numbers interact with each other. We use the beads to visualize and physically complete numeracy, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. One example is the colorful bead stare, a work that helps the child master the numerical understanding of 1 through 10. Bella enjoyed this beadwork for learning and understanding multiplication this past year, and Noah is currently working on skip counting. There are so many resources like blog posts, videos, and printables to pair with this material, but if you'd like to see a video from us, maybe activity ideas, let me know and I can start working on that video. Calendar work. This wooden calendar is by Treasures from Jennifer and calendar work provides a great opportunity for learning all kinds of math skills. If you keep up with our videos, you've seen me implement calendar work in some of my math invitation or math setups type of videos. For younger children, it's just a great visual tool for counting, number sequencing, patterns, and just becoming familiar with temporal concepts. We've also enjoyed pairing it with Telling Time by Jules Older. Art integration is an engaging and effective way to achieve standards in both math and visual arts. In the composition, concrete circles, horizontal and vertical, open and closed lines, geometric shapes, form, symmetry. Here are some examples of our math work this year. I shared a video of the kids creating this uh, analog clock for learning time. Bella made this multiplication of flower during a Chinese folktale main lesson block. We still need to decide how we want to bind this main lesson book made by Bella of multiplication flowers, which is a method to introducing multiplication in Waldorf classrooms. And creative form drawing by Angela Lord, again, not a resource that is math specific, but we've enjoyed creative form drawing for developing spatial orientation, forms, and scale. There is another form drawing workbook that I'm planning to integrate in the near future to introduce Bella to geometric thinking. I don't have it yet, but I will link it down below. Living math books make math more meaningful by adding literature to math. A living math book is a book that presents mathematical concepts in real life context, so not a textbook. Some of our most recent favorites are Seashells by the Seashore, a counting and seashell identification book.
My granny went to the market, a around the world counting rhyme, super fun and vibrant. I already mentioned this, telling time. And we continue to revisit this title of Grapes of Math, Mind Stretching Math Riddles by Greg Ting. Number blocks by some blocks are solid wood stacking number blocks designed to improve numeracy. The height of each block represents its value from simple ordering, counting to value and multiplication and fractions. Developing hand-eye coordination, these are a tactile material for hands-on math. It's a quality math resource made of solid beech wood that will last for years upon years. Music. Math songs can have many uses for teaching. We use songs for math review and mastery. Again, I've shared this resource so much over the last few years that I won't go in depth, but we love and continue to revisit musical multiplication by the good and the beautiful. It has been one of our favorite resources for multiplication mastery. There are jingles or short like rhymes that go along with each of these beautifully uh, illustrated uh, multiplication problems and they're all inspired by nature. Of course, we love math specific board games, but I also want to encourage you to look for math in the classics that you may already have in your home. There are so many math game possibilities with a set of dominoes besides its traditional use, which already practices numeracy. Uh, we love addition bingo, but you can find a printable or DIY for subtraction, number words, multiplication, telling time, bingo, and of course a deck of cards can be used for various math related games. Gardening, from counting seeds, measuring soil and seed depth to pattern and graphs, there are countless math learning opportunities in the garden. We love this math in the garden guide for the out of the box activity suggestions and project ideas. It's not in stock on the supplier's website and I haven't confirmed myself that it's no longer in print or not, but I encourage you to look out for a gently used copy if you have the opportunity. However, you can most definitely do it without this resource. There are endless of ideas on the internet, Pinterest, and other resources as well. I've heard Wild Math is a good option. And although I don't have experiences with them, I've seen other garden math titles on Amazon as well. One that isn't math specific, but still filled with so many gardening family projects is Roots, Shoots, Buckets, and Boots. There is a pizza garden and recipe for pizza in which your child ex is experiencing measurements, fractions. Uh, math practice is just naturally happening just by working in the garden. So just get out there with your kids. And speaking of a natural math unfoldings, cookbooks, because there's math and science happening while you cook. Preparing meals with your kids helps them practice measurements, multiplication, division, fractions, and more. I purchased this DK cookbook for Bella last year as a math supplement, and she says it was her favorite way to do or learn math. This cookbook is super comprehensive for kids with its step-by-step -step photo accompanied by simple text for step-by-step uh, -step instruction. The beginning of the book has an intro information on healthy eating, equipment and tools, methods to cooking and baking, and safety. There are also several recipes to different meals of the day like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but there are also fun categories like party foods. And cookbooks are not just a great resource for our younger children, but they're also a great math supplement for teens. One way we approach chemistry for my high schoolers is through baking because there's so much chemistry happening in baking. This cookbook here, I think I found this at Five Below several years ago, and it's been one of our favorite baking cookbooks. Loose parts, simple objects which can be moved and manipulated easily, usually in loose parts play, but they can also be used for hands-on math activities. One of my favorite ways to use loose parts is in math invitations. I have an entire video on loose parts. It is from a few years back, but it gives a good explanation and examples of loose parts and how we use them. And I've also shared a few videos on math invitations. I will link everything down below. Building blocks. I've shared many videos about playing with blocks. 
through block play, children can understand sizes, shapes, patterns, spatial awareness. Block play can also lead to increased skills in counting, adding, sorting, and more. Our favorite block set is the Large Stepped Pyramid by Grimm's. This set is pricey, and I want to encourage you that any block set is better than none. However, the price was worth it for us for many reasons, including that this is a 100-piece set, a good amount for my two to three to younger children to utilize at once. We love this set mostly because the varying sizes and that each size is mathematically proportional to the other. So we refer to them as one piece to five piece blocks. This makes them a good material for visualizing mathematical concepts like number relations and representations. The colors and different shades and gradients, which are also great for color exploration, cognitive learning development in early childhood education. All right, friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this quick roundup of our favorite math resources to learn and teach math without curriculum. And if you did enjoy this video as much as I hope you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I would also love for you to share your favorite math resources and materials in the comment section down below. And I leave you with the little reminder to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for your love.